India uh, tested uh, in 1974. Uh, this was Mrs. Gandhi's decision. It was a highly secret decision, but it had been preceded by a long debate and public announcements. From 1948, uh, the Indian Prime Minister Nehru, her father, uh, had said that India preferred peaceful uses uh, of atomic energy, but had uh, the right to use it for defense purposes if needed. Uh, this was quite well known to the world community. Uh, it was known to uh, the government of Canada because Canada and India negotiated uh, uh, the supply of the uh, Cyrus reactor, which was used for the 74 test. So there was a long uh, history uh, of uh, contact between Canada and India, USA and India, the French uh, and the Russians, the French in particular, uh, on cooperating with India's atomic energy development. The Indian test was significant largely when it didn't happen. In other words, that it didn't happen before 1968 because the uh, Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty legitimizes nuclear possession by any state that had tested before the signature of the treaty. India was almost ready to test, but not quite, and it tested four years after the, uh, the NPT, which has put it outside the nuclear non-proliferation regime ever since, despite the fact that its uh, nearest competitor, China, was included within the legitimate holders of nuclear weapons by virtue of its having tested a couple of years earlier. There was a widespread condemnation uh, uh, in, in the, by the world community of the Indian test. But Mrs. Gandhi, after the test, had said, this is a scientific ex experiment, we are not going to develop nuclear weapons. And this is what happened uh, from 1974 to 1998. When the, when the Prime Minister Bajpai, he ordered five tests and he immediately declared that India is now a nuclear weapon state. So there was a difference between uh, the, uh, the, uh, what was said by, by the Indian government in 74 and what was said by them in 1998. But the reaction of the world community uh, also differed in the 70s, after the 74 test strong condemnation, strong pressure for India to get into the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, strong resistance by the Indian government saying, no, it is discriminatory and we are not going to go near the treaty. But the pressure was there. 1998, after India declared that it was a nuclear weapon state, there was condemnation initially, but it lasted only about six months. And then, immediately thereafter, uh, the United States government and European governments, uh, they started uh, strategic dialogues with India. The Indian explosion didn't have that much impact on the IASF because for a very simple reason that most of the Indian facilities were not under IASF course. And this was all only to do with the Cyrus reactor and perhaps the plutonium produced there. But again, this was not subject to the IASF course. So, from the safeguards point of view, very little. Non-proliferation point of view and export control point of view, a lot. The Indian test was, had, a, had a big effect uh, in international thinking uh, because India had been seen as the sixth nuclear proliferator. And the theory was, it was a theory, although technically uh, Ira uh, Israel was the sixth, but since they never made a declaration, Right, that didn't count. Uh, India was seen as the as sort of the tripwire, as the sixth, which would trigger a domino effect, not only Pakistan but others. That was a theory propagated by uh, the director of the uh, International Institute for Strategic Studies, Alistair Buchan, who was a good friend of the Americans. And so the two of them were were, were pushing this view that India was key in the non-proliferation effort. And so the advocates of the NPT uh, had a great interest in keeping India in check. 
There are really two phases to India's involvement in nuclear non-proliferation from the time that it tested in the 1970s when it claimed it was a peaceful nuclear explosive to its decision in the 1990s to openly test a nuclear weapon. Um, through the period between those two tests, India was reasonably constructive on nuclear non-proliferation issues, in part because it never got involved, as Pakistan we now know did, in spreading nuclear weapons beyond itself, um, but also because it insisted throughout the period that any non-proliferation had to take place in the context of uh, disarmament. In other words, it was more than willing, it said, to give up any potential it had for developing nuclear weapons, as long as those who had actually already developed the weapons would give them up as well. Um, it tested in uh, the late 1990s, not long after the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty was permanently extended, making it unlikely in the Indians' view that the five legitimate nuclear weapon states were going to live up to their commitments to disarm.